Welcome to Conspiracy Beer Me. I'm Justin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm the other one drinking today. I'm Shane. <laughs> and you're listening to the podcast. It's making conspiracies fun again. Today's topic, uh, the aliens are among us. Mm-hmm. Uh, the big news coming out of uh, the the conspiratorial world, paranormal world, is that uh, there's been some major uh, disclosure. Uh, it's sort of the, the, the next step in the rising conflict, the of disclosure that's been happening i, I think mm-hmm. maybe for like a year sure or plus. since 2020 i guess since those uh, since the uh, uvp videos are released and the yes. new york times article came out so we're gonna talk about that uh which we're very excited about uh as always we're sponsored by hot fly brewing Thank which you. is based out of rocky mountain north carolina with brewery in charlotte north mm-hmm. carolina they make incredible beers uh so good that i've sworn it off for a little bit. yeah <laughs> i can't stop drinking those crunch times well it doesn't help that we've been recording at 10 a.m every uh, yeah, that's a, a tough times, one. And we're just blasting beers at 10 in the morning. Yeah, it's doing wonders for my, <laughs> yeah. my health. Yeah, uh, mine too. I've uh, been over uh, today in the studio, and I was like, you ever just uh, almost lose your balance <laughs> and get real dizzy? And you're like, yeah, it's a little blood pressure. I was like, yeah, or alcoholism. crack a beer and solve this. this. Yeah. yeah. No, it, uh, but they're they're fantastic if you ever get a chance to yeah, try them in stores. I'm or, drinking or, a ghost. So good. A ghost or a ghost? Ghost. Up? Ghost. G-H-O-S-T It's the name. Which kind of beer is it? I don't know. Delicious. I, I need readers because it's got small print on there. Um, oh, West Coast IPA. Well, that's good. That's I like good. It. That's good. Yeah, um, it's nice. So uh, we are uh, we are uh, uh, big news for for those of you that are listening who haven't been on the Patreon. Uh, we are going to be doing a big name change coming up soon, uh, early July. Uh, same podcast, same host, same format, pretty much. Same topics. Same topics, just a little bit of a, a, a name change to reflect more of what we are and who, what mm-hmm. we're about, and we're excited. We'll give you more details on that when we do the name change. Yeah, logo's done, I think. So, the, so listen, the, yeah. the Conspiracy Beer Me merchandise is going to be very valuable here in about two weeks, so maybe oh. maybe buy some while you can. Yeah, go to our website. You can buy it there. I have two five-panel trucker hats left. That's it? You gave all of them away. <laughs> well, I still owe a guy, too. Oh, really? Those are for him. I'm eventually oh, okay. going to mail them. That's, okay. I, I, I sold them all to show in Florida except for two. Nice. So I got two for that guy. Nice. Uh, I think that's it, man. I think yeah, we've got enough to talk about. Mm-hmm. And whenever we talk about aliens, UFOs, UAPs, and the whatnot, our favorite person to do it with is New York-based comedy comedian, and friend Sean Donnelly, welcome back to Conspiracy Beer Me. How are you, Sean? Hey guys, thanks for having me again. Always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Always glad to have you on, especially to talk about this stuff. Now, and, and, absolutely, and, I'm excited. And oh, in yeah. case nobody knows uh, uh, from prior episodes, you're a uh, a regular at the Comedy Cellar there in New York, and you, you're a touring comic all over the country. And you've also been doing these uh, kind of man on the street interviews where you explore people's perceptions and things about ufos and aliens and all that too yeah i got rid of my other twitter and i I have a tiktok called ufo street where i ask people i say ufos are real what do you think they are and i should be doing way more of them i've I've taped a bunch more that i'm going to be putting out like in the next couple weeks nice they're very interesting Uh, it's fun to hear people the regular kind of person's perspective yeah i'm always i it's in it's so it's funny because there's a few videos where there's people are so ambivalent they're just like it's like it's aliens like right like multiple people are just like yeah, that's like they shrug and go. It's aliens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, and they totally have accepted it. You know. Yeah, which I think is partially why we are in a space with disclosure that we are, because I think they're kind of like most people don't give a shit nowadays. You you can you can trust in this apathy. I think. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. one of the things we'll probably get into. Is I think you can really really double down on people not paying attention or not really caring. Absolutely. Know? Yeah, that's that's something that I do want to talk about. In fact, I want to talk about people on the street as well. But let's mm-hmm. get the let's get the. The facts out is about what happened. Uh, if you if you don't know, a senior CIA intelligence officer by the name of David Grush filed for whistleblower protection, and 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 what whistleblower protection is is a federal law that if you uh, if you allege fraud or uh, abuse or anything in, in within your your governmental department, and then you face retaliation, you can then file for whistleblower protection. Now he claims that he made his superiors aware that information about alien craft, recovered alien craft and a reverse engineering program involving those craft was fraudulently withheld from Congress. And and, and some of those craft, by the way, contained bodies of Mm non-human intelligent life forms. And then he was retaliated against. Mm -hmm. And that was the, that's the, the, the crux of this claim 
And so that was what was released, and the story was put out. It first was covered uh, by some some lesser-known news organizations, and then it kind of made its way. I would say... The, all, the first article was the debrief, which right, is right. known amongst UFO people, but the authors of that article were the people from that New York Times article in 2007. Right. Yeah, and, Leslie and, Keen and uh, Blumenthal. Is that who? Blumenthal, yeah. Yeah, and they, they did shop that article to the Washington Post, who apparently was interested in it, but just didn't have the time because the the authors had another offer, another mm-hmm. exclusive author offer for money, which <laughs> journalists don't make a lot of money. So I'm sure they were like, we got to say yes to these people by this date. Mm-hmm. And watch the post says, we're not going to be able to vet this at the right. time. But they were interested in it enough. But it has not, this story has not caught on by the New York Times, Washington Post, or any of the major. I've NBC. seen it on Fox, but that's it. Fox and... I saw it somewhere else. Maybe CNN at least had it okay. on their website. Well, let me tell you why that makes sense to me. Because even in regards to the 2017 article, you f- I remember seeing an interview with Christopher Mellon, who was part of the intelligence mm-hmm. community for years and who's one of the guys who uh, engineered the release of those videos for the article and who seems like a very, very uh, stable, credible person to me. And apparently uh, they, him and Leslie Kane were disappointed and probably Ralph Blumenthal because – even though the final product that got put out by the Times was a bombshell of an article, there was thing they, they went they went the military uh, funding angle. Right. So I think that's you don't really have that in this um, in this uh, narrative here with this guy Dan. So I think there I think the amount of due diligence that would have had to been done for the Times for the Post uh, would have been would have taken two three years for them because they just would have not wanted to release that would have signed off, which, which is actually pretty um, encouraging that you sure. still have news outlets. Sure. Like that. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's why they were like, Hey, we can't do this because it didn't have that. Like, Hey, here's the real world part of it that we can sell to our, our readers who trust us. Sure. Right. There's also uh, no real. And I think that's why it didn't happen for them because it's the yeah. same people, the same reporting. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't see why, you know, I, I, you, I, I've read Leslie Kane's book. I, I don't see why you wouldn't just be like, this seems like a sober, the sober sources. Yeah. It's also weird too. I guess there's no physical evidence in the previous, in the New York times when they had videos and this one just has uh second hand, third hand knowledge right. or, you know, David, reports. David Grush was, was, was relaying information that had been told to him by mm-hmm. people with firsthand knowledge. Also, there's a difference between saying Navy pilots have encountered unidentified aerial and aquatic phenomena that we don't know where it's coming from versus David Grush's allegation, which is, no, we know exactly where it's coming from. Mm. It is non-intelligent human, non is intelligent, non-human life forms. And they are, and we found some of these crashes. That's a much bigger allegation in my mind. So I, I see why there would need yeah. to be more sort of journalistic and digging mm. in to that before you. It's, yeah, I, I agree. And it's an indictment of the system. And it's uh, it ends up it's earth shattering for <laughs> a democracy because yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like at a level where it's almost like a second blow. Remember, they, they called them when JFK got shot, they called it the end of Camelot. And then when you mm. the distrust in the government went through the roof. Right. And even whatever you whatever you believe about that topic, which you go off, you know, obviously that's a whole other show. But what right. I'm saying is uh, this would just be a. um another giant blow to people's trust within the government, sure. which I think has been eroding since, since the sixties anyway. So sure. I don't think that's why I think what we talked about earlier with the apathy would just be in place. I don't I think you have enough regular people that it's in their DNA. Like, well, yeah, of course they're lying. Like the ha- it's happened multiple, multiple times. Sure. So I don't think the wouldn't be as much of a bombshell, mm-hmm. but what it would do is it would be cause for investigation and for arrests. If, if you're really going to go the, yeah. the tried and true justice route and, yeah. These guys aren't going to allow themselves to be exposed to that. I don't no, think. they'll that's, just hop in a UFO and go away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're going to put me in jail. I'll see you in the future. Yeah. Well, well, that that is an interesting. Like, like Mel Brooks in the Space <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Speaking of going going to jail, and, and mm-hmm. I don't, I do not think it was a wag the dog uh, situation, but this article came out uh, early in the week, Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then this week is the week that former president Donald Trump was uh, indicted. And that just dominated the news cycle. Mm-hmm. I had to wonder sometimes during the week, like, if that had not transpired, if we had a regular slow summer news cycle, if maybe there had been 
right. chance for some of those larger news outlets to cover it. Now, regardless of all that, and, and Sean, Shane and I talked about this in an, in an earlier discussion. You know, I'm of the I'm of the variety that thinks, uh, and this is partly because of distrust with the government, is that no amount of disclosure, no amount of news reporting is ever going to convince people the only thing that's going to convince them is a president of the United States standing in front of a podium Mm -hmm. in front of journalists and saying, I'm here to tell you that we now are acknowledging that we have evidence of non-human intelligent life on this planet Mm -hmm. that has been here for some amount of time. We've recovered some of their craft. Until there's that sort of straightforward disclosure. I don't even think that exists. I don't even think that would do it. Oh yeah, I, mean, I think you because it's so. But I think that's when the partisan politics oh, sure. would come into play, and they would go, "Oh, it's Biden trying to cover up that uh, Kam- Kamala oh, Harris right. is not a good." Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How wrong. bad of a vice president <laughs> would she have to be for you to be like, <laughs> you know what we'll do? We'll admit there's aliens. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the heat off fire. No, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think it'd be a majority of people would go, "Okay, this is this is it." Yeah, but I think you'd still, still have because the internet that exists and you'd still yeah. have the same types of people being like, ah, it's, it's, it's liberal bullshit. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 the, right. it's the Republicans trying to put that in there to blah, blah, whatever it is. I think that you just, everybody just like have people talk about how the internet has, uh, you know, like the opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. And, and the internet has just made them, uh, right. has given them a megaphone is the same way that you're going to have so many, um, the bonkers and just complete skeptics just be like, nah, I don't even, I don't even trust that. Why should I try? So yeah. you're saying you, the government yeah. lied to me about this for eight years that as fodder to go, well, maybe they're lying now. Maybe right. it really is, you know, whatever the hell. Who yeah. Knows? But I'm saying that, um, is there I anything think that's that you I mean about it, it's just going to be who believes it, believes it and who doesn't, who does it. And, and so there, I mean, aside from like an alien invasion where it's like, you, you just, that might do it. That yeah. might do it. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, I mean, I, I guess there's now with with the deep fake technology, there's probably no even video footage that would convince a skeptic. And no. Right. That's that, the other thing. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, and the problem is, is that, that nobody does their due diligence. There's software out there to detect 98 percent of deep fakes, but no one's going to run that. Right. Uh, and and then, the people that do, they, yeah, they get yeah. told them. I don't. People won't you. even yeah. even Google a headline. They're yeah. Just like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, here's the so. thing about that. My opinion on the whole thing is that I, I don't. It, it, the, the thing that happens with what's so funny with Americans is a, a couple different opinions. Is is that what happens to the thank you for your service when it comes to this type of stuff? Right. So we're really, really pro military. But so so in the in the in the same breath that you're saying thank you for your service, you can literally in a news story about a, a decorated veteran call him. Well, maybe he's a kook. Use right. the word. Kook, but what happened to right. uh, respect the military and do this? Is the only time. There's two reasons I think it is. It's because they they, they want to don't not be culpable if it is the wrong, and then just like hey, hands off. And I think also because it relates to the Air Force. He was in the Air Force, mm-hmm. and I think there's less respect for that. So at one po- at what point do we believe these guys? This guy went the completely legal whistleblower yeah. route. Mm-hmm. He's only revealing the information he can legally based off that sure. law. Yeah. And we're still using right. the word kook. Yeah. And you see him and you you look in his eyes on the interview and he's being asked, are you a kook? And he's saying no. He's not rattling. He's right. not moving his foot. He's not Tom DeLonging it. Where, right. know, whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's called drugs. Where he's being played. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yes, could he be being played? I don't know. And one time during this interview that you that I that that Shane sent me, this guy mentioned this for four years. He's going over this information. At what point are you going to believe serious people on this? Right. I'm yeah. Not saying, right. Yeah. You know, so I just that's my main thing with this. I'm like, there's so much of it. So you, I would love somebody to compile a list so you're, of of the credible people sure. that you have to go. Don't blow, believe him. Don't believe him. Mm-hmm. Don't believe her. Don't believe him. Don't believe her. I would love to see it in one giant basket. And then people go, Oh, wait a minute. Like this is a, a plethora. Would you say I have a plethora of information about yeah. fucking that? That seems credible. It's, it gets, it gets insane after a while. Cause it's like one of these things where you're like, you're like, if, if I forget who it was that, Oh, I think it was, I think it was, um, Mellon. What's it? Not Mellon. Uh, the other guy that just had a news story about him, but it's just his opinion. He's a scientist. Uh, he works at Harvard. Oh, Abby, uh, Abby Loeb. Lo- uh, no, not Abby Loeb. Um, Gary, Gary, oh, Sons, Gary McKinnon. Nolan. Nolan. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nolan, Nolan, whatever his name yep, is. Nolan. And they go, well, what, what's the proof that you, what, 
what proof is it that you have that this is uh, happening or this is credible? And he goes, just the sheer amount of anecdotal eyewitness. It's like, it's just so large. When mm-hmm. are you just going to go, hey, it's probably something. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. It is what it is. Yeah. And then you have a guy like this with all these accolades tell you, uh, this is what I found out and I believe it. And it's a four-year investigation that I did. I don't know, man. At one point, you have to like suspend disbelief and go, all right, I, I, buy, what, I buy you believe it and I... Based yeah. off everything else, I'm I'm in. I'm I'm 100 yeah. percent in. I don't see I don't see the 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 advantage of of bullshitting at this point. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it's coming to him at personal uh, cost to his job, his his yep. entire life. So it's like, why would he uh, do this? Um, and he said in the interview, he goes, "I just felt like we needed leadership on this issue um, from someone that knows what's happening." Yeah, and he and and to your point, Sean, is that his colleagues or former colleagues in some cases. They interviewed some of them, and they're like, I, I I, have a hard time believing what he's saying, but what I know of David Grush is that he is as straight a shooter as there's ever been yeah. in the CIA. Like, his yes is yes, his no is no. He does not. He's just that guy that's like, mm-hmm. by the book. And and that, that again, it adds, and there's so many of what you're talking about, this plethora of people, you know, there's there are the kooks out there. Usually sure. the kooks say, and then buy my book. Absolutely. But yeah. these right. guys are not saying that. They're saying this is a threat to U.S. military interests and safety, and we need to have Congress. And now Congress is now saying we are going to to look into this, which probably We're means a we'll, whole new uh, hearing. I believe right. based yeah. off is, his. Yes. Yeah. Right. So probably means we'll never hear anything else <laughs> about this ever again. That's probably worth <laughs> right. Well, my maybe right, exactly. yeah. My fear is well, that these people will be right into it, and they'll be like, "Oh, this should be secret. This is terrifying," and then they'll yeah. just put it back in the closet. You know, uh, right? Which would be because here's the thing: it's like if it is, if you even if even if their even if their reasoning wasn't national security for the secrecy, and it and, and everything he's saying, even at the end of that interview when they get into packs made, mm-hmm. which he didn't know about, and he doesn't right. he doesn't say he knows about any packs made with non human intelligence. He's saying like I'd like to know more about that side of it because I'm wondering myself. Yeah, that could mean a million different things. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But even if even if that's even if you're even if you're not just trying to profiteer, you know, wartime profiteer off this. Even if it is, even if you do have a noble, if you have a, you, know, you could you could just say the noble reason that we didn't tell you is because this is a threat to the country, and we were trying to take care of it behind the scenes, and we we want to protect the, the American public. A lot of people would buy that, yeah. And then you know, a lot right. of people would just would just go along with it. Like I I get that. Like you know, even, even the, what was the, the the it was the Eisenhower thing, right? Wasn't that the big the big myth, the big urban myth that he met with these entities? Oh yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, whatever they the majestic twelve was put yeah. together to yeah whatever it was. He supposedly he went the to the timing, dentist. But, yeah, he yeah. went to the dentist. Yeah, yeah. They, right, right, yeah. right. The dentist, right, exactly. Because he chipped his tooth on chicken wings that didn't exist. Instead of the, the time. dentist coming to him, <laughs> they they drove him out. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, we did away we did we that was a fun it. episode with tab one but yeah it was a whole thing they're like yeah he broke his tooth on uh buffalo wings it's like buffalo wings weren't invented for 10 years after that <laughs> by the way <laughs> that's the real conspiracy <laughs> yeah, it is. Aliens yeah. give us buffalo wings. <laughs> yeah exactly but the but what i'm trying to say is like um th- this is all uh if you if you put this stuff I, you know even because even as that interview went on from from that news nation interview i was like he you could see him humming and hawing on on, on fantastical side of things because mm-hmm. I think he doesn't have the he doesn't have the actual information about that, and he was very very careful to ride that line about what am I what am I legally la- allowed under yeah. the whistleblower rule. Right. So there you go. That that shows that shows like it, it is like he said I'm not out for fame and fortune. I believe it because he he was showing decision making skills as he's being interviewed. Like yeah. if you were if you really were looking for the fame part of this thing, you'd be like, yeah, I think so. In my opinion, I sure. think so. Yeah. Like, and he was like, ah, well, I, not really. So it's like one of these things where it's like he seemed like a pretty pensive guy. Mm-hmm. The only thing that he does say that's not, I don't even think it's a profit thing is they talk about he's starting a um, a scientific um, oh, research yeah. association. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, that sounds like a non profit organization. And yes, maybe he's thinking. I would just think that I don't. I don't think you're making that much more with a scientific organization no. if it's nonprofit uh, off a military uh, salary for another. He could have worked. Look at him. What was it, what's the guy? Fifty tops. Yeah, and he's doing. Yeah. He's a real estate agent now, but I guess he's a, he's a starting. I don't know. He's not not that old. He may he, he might be in his forties. He may be younger. Than that. Yeah, he I looks young. I don't know. Yeah, he looks thirty. Exactly. Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. So it's like, why? If you think about it, so if he's just complacent, could have stayed in there, it was probably making at least eighty to a hundred a year. 
Wh- wh- where's, also, what doesn't that make more profit? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, profit inducing than um. Yeah, and the reputational hit non- too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, it, and he what, does have a background in physics. That was his whole thing. So he knows about not only yeah. physics, he can apply that to this nonprofit and stuff. I know it doesn't have to do with money, but well, he does have that background, so it makes sense that he would. You know, what do you think uh, about? So, so one of the, one of the, well, I guess one of the things that that uh, people are talking about is if if a major disclosure come like if the government comes out and says this is true, obviously they've had ninety years to say this is true. Mm-hmm. So some people are asking, why would they do it now? Like, it's not something they would do unless there was a necessity to do it. Unless right. there, um, and, and, and one, one theory is that we are hopelessly behind China in the reverse engineering process. And the only way like that catch up with the private sector, yeah. that's what, that's it is that we have to engage the private sector. And the only way to engage the private sector is you know, to keep a secret like this tight, it has to be extremely tight. I mean, yeah. you have to have people with, in the military with high-level security clearance that don't know about it. Right, like, and they said that they would have silos, like, you work on this part of the craft, you work on this part yeah. of the craft, and so they never talk, and it's like, you need to have all the scientists in one room to, like, right. really understand. And that's no way to keep the secret, you know, like, if, if, if we're going to if we're gonna do this right and catch up, we've got to just let people know that's what we're doing. Yeah, do everything that we know, yeah. which also emboldens this guy. I think this guy emboldens the Lazar. The Lazar it does, claims, yeah. Because it's exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. I was only told to work on this part of the craft. It makes it seem, I'm, I was, I was t- leaning towards believing most of what he said anyway, but I'm like, this really kind of sure. backs Lazar up. Yeah, and he uh, mentioned heavy atomic elements. Like he said, there's like, and so that kind of speaks to what Lazar always said. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they, so I, I think that, um, yeah, um, I think for lack of, so you're saying what, what you just said, uh, JD, like you said that, are you saying that they're, they're, they're putting this out into the news because of that and using, I'm using saying, Dan Grutch as that, or you're saying that if they did come out and say, yes, it's true. Is this all orchestrated or you're yeah, saying that's, that's they, the theory. The theory is, is that, that, uh, if they wanted to, they, they have they have put off disclosure at least aside from soft disclosures here and there um for for a long time and if they're going to come out and say yes we we have these crafts now it's the government has been behind all of this like this mm-hmm. is all part of a plan and this is all just sort of stress test to see is the public going to react well i mean is it, because what you don't want to do is come out on sunny night and say we have these crafts and then the next Monday morning, the stock market crashes, and the complete, right. and, and then and, and then the government is like, okay, that was a people weren't prepared for that. We had now have a hurricane it's Katrina a situation, yeah. So yeah, they were in shambles because yeah. of right, yeah. yeah. So you want to use, but 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 they need the private sector, and they can't just bring the private sector in because it's just too many people. But they need them. I mean, our our private sector engineering is top notch in the world, and. I mean, and it's sort of what they did with when we invented the atomic bomb is, is yeah, which yeah. Manhattan Project. Gotta we get just, everybody. We brought in the best minds from all over the world, but there was no right. way to keep it secret. I mean, and it was not, which is why the plans got stolen and, and given to some, another country. It yeah. also the fact that you're not you're not referring to Lockheed Martin, like like it shows you how government based Lockheed Martin and, and, oh, right. and all that they 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 have ze- there's zero private sector like they right. like sharing it with them or sharing it partially with them. Where there was no risk of it getting out into the public whatsoever, and when they, people go, "How could you keep this?" is because that's basically just an extension of the government. So right, what you're saying right. is, 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 is there? There's no, um, there's no uh, uh, um, group, there's no company that the gov- like the Department of Defense can share it with that has a shared profile with the public like right. there's they, 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 they're so like on their own island basically they've right they've, they've dug themselves their own little hole where they can't trust anything or they can only trust it piecemeal to even bring in uh, a civilian uh, physicists or whoever else right. work on it so yeah maybe you're right maybe this is like a little all this is a little test hey i'm gonna pump the gas a little bit and see what do you guys think what happens to the markets i think i think the markets are a great 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 angle on this where it's like Will this be pandemonium? Will this be uh, uh, the housing um, uh, market crash times twelve? Will this be COVID uh, during lockdown? You know, yeah, whatever, whatever right, you want to call it. And I, that's always and and I I don't I don't actually disagree with that being in the mindset because yeah. 
you don't want society to take such a hit that people can't live anymore, especially the, 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 the right. millions of people who don't give a shit if there are yeah. probably already kind of accepted that this yeah. is just something that's exists, you know? Yeah. And that's one of the things Dave, uh, the whistleblower said was that, uh, the reason that we, you know, we've had this cold war and why they said, why have you not had, why is Russia or China not revealed this to their public? It's the same reason we have. And it's because the socioeconomic implications could be huge, you know? So it's, um, right. I mean that whole collapse of the stock market, that could happen globally. I mean, it's it, they could destroy right. how entire societies work. So it makes sense that they're trying to keep it well, solid. It, especially, and this is, goes back to the partisan politics side of it. Especially if you if you admit that there are uh, non human intelligent life on this earth who are far more superior than there, and, and then somebody in the audience says, "Mr. President, well, what do they what do they want?" And they're like, "They want to." They want to fix global climate change. And then all of a sudden, people oh, are yeah, like, yeah. well, this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Project Blue Beam. This is, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. this is just the Democrats wanting to put us back in masks and all this. And, so that's where exactly. it becomes. So if it's like they're here, they don't really want to have anything to do with us. Yeah. But they're here. So just, you know, next time somebody tells you they saw an alien, just believe them. Yeah. That, that's, that's a far cry from like, we have to be united against this group of farly far superior creatures right. than us. that would be catastrophic in my opinion mm-hmm. well even when even when he brings up it's he kind of goes into a little bit of an explanation of the possibility of interdimensional it being interdimensional yeah yeah he did and i way farther than i thought would be in that inter i i was a little bit surprised at how much he was like well you know it's mathematically possible they be they, they're just they're just present and they're in another, another dimension simultaneously, and they're popping over, which has been the thought for a lot of UFO a lot, people for a, lot, a, a yeah, long yeah. time. Which also explain a lot of a lot of a lot of sightings and a lot of sure. um, how how these the craft operate and how what people see. Right. It also explains too. Um, I think this is like this overarching thing that we've talked about a lot in this pod is that if they are in another dimension, that definitely gives credence to why places like Skinwalker Ranch or you, uh, aliens or things like that. It's like these are just different layers of reality, reality on top of ours on Earth, and we just happen to pop in in thin places. We just happen to see them. They can move in. They can move out. We just don't have that ability. Right. And I, to go back to your um, the, the political part of this, one thing that – it, it the the George Knapp uh, document dump from uh, the Russia that he has all these that I I believe that I believe him that he went over there and did mm-hmm. speak to those people. So if you see it when that government crumbled, there was uh, people in in positions of power willing to go. Okay, yeah, this, we're, this is hopeless right here. Fuck it, I'll tell you whatever yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. that and then for some then that kind of was swept under the rug because of the years that it was, and I think there wasn't as, sure. an openness to it like there is now. And then the once they got a little bit more stable, even though it's you know it's Putin, but once you get the, a little bit more locked down with KGB, whatever you want to call it, and they got back and they have their whatever you want to call their strength, this gets immediately this whatever this Cold War gets picked right back up. Yeah, like it's almost just understood. It seems like okay, we're a functioning government again. We're, all right, these guys that have been in it for thirty years, we know mum's the word on this yeah and who know you know i, I which which it, it's almost like um it's just an understood thing i think with a lot of these these military types to just go we don't say shit about it because mm-hmm. of for, for whatever reason because yeah. look at the look at even the but it just shows you the the reach of these countries because i'm sure there's there's territories that were controlled by uh ussr and and russian authorities that would uh, almost like the Brazil, the 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 um the James Fox uh, oh, the contact where yeah, know, you have all these little Man. pieces of information, but immediately they're like, after finding out about with this whistleblower, when you hear about the hey they came right away and shut it right down, it's like yeah because there was an active yeah, effort right. to do that, and if yeah. you have this guy telling you this, it gives it some more validity there that it, yeah this is being monitored, and all you need is people to rat each other out. All you right. need is a guy on the phone going, "You got another one? Come on, clean it up." Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, it's interesting. Oftentimes I'm like, why do we have such reach around the globe? And I understand that what we're told is it's global security. We just need to have bases so we can get to active hotspots. But it's like that also helps you get to UFOs. Also right? this. Yeah. Right. And I was just, uh, I, ironically, I was just listening to a pod. My buddy turned me on to the Intercepted podcast. And they were talking about the strength of the U.S. dollar and how it started. And and they were the 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 
the interest in the countries around the world to be involved in the US dollar because it was backed by tangible uh, goods. It was oh, yeah, yeah. gold and then whatever mm-hmm. else. Uh, so what that did is I think and just above my own thoughts, uh, that seems like that'd be a very great way to in- insert yourself into situations like this. It can go all the way down the line. This, mm-hmm. this seems like you can snowball into, Hey, you have our dollar. You, we, your, your currency is based off our dollar. Yeah. We can just come in in the middle of the night without talking to your military yeah. and grab these bodies from, sure. from a Mar- 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 whatever it's called, Marginia, whatever it's or called. By, that it's makes, that, I yeah. don't see that out of the realm of possibility of the United States military, which has what a larger budget than the, the next 20, six countries combined after it's, whatever it is. so it's like yeah money talks you yeah know? it does and what's yeah. crazy too is like we always complain we're like oh they spend so much on defense and the budget we don't know where all this money goes uh why aren't they spending it back home but maybe this is such a huge issue and such a crazy thing that they're like listen we got to throw every piece of money at it and not tell you about because it it's that important and that dangerous um, oh you're saying this issue this issue yeah it makes um, me it makes me think that they probably are tracking these devices, these UAPs, uh, all the time. And, yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and and they're able to determine when they've entered from, say, the ionosphere into the lower atmosphere or wherever wherever it is that it's problematic. Mm-hmm. And they're able to detect the crashes, and then they deploy probably reverse-engineered crafts of similar mm-hmm. to get there very quickly and recover the crash. And, the, and and every time one of these crashes, probably the world's superpowers are all sure like, you know, and, and, um, that, that would make some sense to me that if there's a tracking system, because, you know, we've been talking about going back to Reagan about star Wars and being sure. able to track a, you know, a, a flea coming into our airspace. Yeah. That right. seems to be more likely to be the case is that we have this really advanced tracking system and we try to get to these crashes before, Mm-hmm. our quote unquote enemies uh get them and i think the 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 muddying the waters is really what, what works well for these people so mm-hmm. remember when the, nobody knew about the nsa and then and then yeah, like, the nsa was, was secret they, they i think in one of the articles about this there was another group mentioned uh that kind of i probably supersedes the nsa so for what you're talking about justin i think what it would you would need is because in our in my brain in my regular civilian brain i'm like well what would be the conduit you'd have to use norad or you would have to use nasa for this mm-hmm. you'd have to use the military radars but you can't because those are in what we're talking about those are quasi civilian civilian right too many yeah. there's too many uh, um a compromisable situations in that. So there'd have to be at the same way that this program exists an infrastructure built mm-hmm. that right. is tra- uh, the tracker you're talking about would have to yep. also not be, this would yeah. be a whole, right. It, basically you're going along the lines of shadow government at that yeah. point. You're yeah, going yeah. Along the well, lines of or shadow military. And we, we, we have covered, uh, for example, uh, the, the deep underground military base uh, network, which again is not a not a confirmed thing, but the theory is that there's these dumbs, these deep underground military bases, and then tunnels that connect them that the government can use to transport. And that was one of the things that came out. That oh, right. These yeah. craft are never transported above ground. They're mm-hmm. always transported out of sight where just regular civilians or or a a radar or satellite could accidentally capture a picture of it. I mean, you guys have been on the highway and seen like a something going down the highway, and you're yeah. like, "What the hell is that?" Yeah, but it's a Wienermobile. Yeah. None, none, none of the, none of the, none of those things. <laughs> it's always underground that yeah. these things are transported. You know, which also if you're doing it, where these bases are, well, these are what these are these are um, uh, like Montana and Mon- Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. Yeah, so far you're from any tr- people. Trust yeah. you see, there's 15 people out there. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's so yeah, it'd be very very easy to shut anything down and not be seen and especially if you're using these these tunnels that nobody knows about that right yeah apparent. also if you believe the the stories of intimidation if like you see something people come up to you and be like we'll fucking murder your family we don't care yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then, well and then we're gonna make it into a fun um uh blockbuster movie <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Of- <laughs> exactly and you will get no credit we will show something that looks like you and you will just be labeled as extra but it, it because here's the thing it's like it's like even that is there's things that pop up in a lot of these anecdotal uh, retellings that are the same, like this men in black thing. I think from the movie and just from me, me, I, I think I went like, Oh, that's both the men in black thing is bullshit for years. I was the men in black thing is bullshit. But then the more you hear about like, you have these, these, these eyewitnesses, you're like, 
Well, somebody came the next day. Somebody came. It's like it's just time and time. Yeah. The same way that when they, people do see beings and people who don't seem related keep mentioning skin tight suits, skin yeah. tight suits, skin tight suits. Yeah. I'm like, ah, that seems kind of like I don't know, but yeah, but you're just watching you, like when you're watching videos from the pre YouTube mm-hmm. when people are saying the same things. And you're, and they don't know each other from different parts of the world or different parts of the country. And you're like, well, that detail matches up. And yeah, right. just, I, exactly. I don't know. It just seems to me the more, isn't that kind of what science is? The, the repetition, shouldn't that kind of put Absolutely. it more in the realm sure. of a scientific uh, experiment? Yeah. Yeah. And someone on Reddit today, I was not supposed to be on there. It's a Reddit ban. Uh, it's a blackout. I forgot. Is morning. there really? Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. They're yeah. real shitty about third party apps. You can. Uh, read all about not some of the Reddit. subs are, are blackout for yeah. 48 hours um they're asking mm-hmm. all users to to not yeah. go on reddit for 48 hours yeah but some, oh, wow. yeah. Okay. someone was complaining they're like uh this guy's just using all the ufo tropes for the past 90 years in his interview i was like yeah because they're probably true. true it's like why would he make up new <laughs> shit <laughs> that doesn't make sense in the narrative like doesn't make any sense and also it's like it. The the really really believable part here is that this guy's not it's he's not just taking an interview with a low level news organization. This guy went through the. I don't think people realize like there's it's like yeah we have show business, but I think that everything's become because of TikTok and mm-hmm. Instagram everything's become show business, and people don't realize there's like a real there's like real laws in real life going on yes in yes. the background of, of you getting mad about uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't know whatever whatever's on you whatever you're you're clicking through yeah the same way that it made me well maybe one of the things that made me realize it and this is not an aside but i'll say it quick i watched that um the the smartless uh um hbo thing and they mm-hmm. had alexandra cortez on and even she was talking really sensibly on that podcast about how like Oh, you know, yeah, you have the internet, and then you have like the real, real life. And I'm like, oh yeah, even you're saying it, and you benefit from the internet things. Yes, how much you're right. loved yeah. there. So yeah. when people are like, oh, he's just saying what everybody says. No, he's not, because everybody isn't putting themselves in legal jeopardy if they're yes. lying. That's a, and yeah. You, you better believe that. Look at Assange, or look at these guys. The guy, the guy fled. Whatever happened, or Snowden. These guys, the reason that that happens is because there's legal penalties for yes. what they're saying, right. and this guy's in the same fucking basket. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, so it's not the same thing as as yep. as uh, even Jeremy or George. Like, no, those guys are serious guys. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's not the same thing as you running a comment on on on, right. on Twitter or uh, Reddit. It's just not even close to that. Yeah, there's real implications to fuck around and find out in that world because there are legal bases to put you in jail or put you uh, to death. Uh, right. And I think that doesn't happen as much like even when. OK, so say you operate under the assumption that Lazar is telling the truth. Mm-hmm. The whistleblower angle on this thing seems to be a pretty strong uh, strategy because you look at Lazar still around. Yeah, um, yeah he's yeah. had some raids here and there, but he was a young kid when he did it. But I think he it, what, wasn't one of the reasons that he came out publicly is because he was saying, like, I wanted to save my life in a way. Yeah. I wanted yeah. To, is that true? I, I, I think so. I think sure, so. But I'm like. It seems like it works. So this guy, I don't know, man. I just don't. The same way we said about uh, the, the, buy my book after this. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. I, I don't. This isn't happening. Yeah, maybe he'll pivot at one point. But like, oh, by the way, I'm going to host uh, the the new game show on CBS <laughs> right. that's replacing yeah. James Corden. <laughs> but yeah. I think I, I, there's so much of it at this point that I, I'm like, when are you just going to go? I, I believe this guy. Is there mm-hmm. nobody? Fravor, this guy. There's a few others. Is there nobody that you're like, I just believe what this guy says he seems right. on the level I yeah mean, when does this happen yeah i want to uh pivot just slightly uh it's it's in the realm of what we're talking about but uh it's a theory that that we've talked a little bit about i don't know if you've heard this uh sean is that are you familiar with helium three no helium three you, you guys always tell me a new thing <laughs> but, so, so helium three is a is a is a i don't know if it's an isotope or an element or what but it's a on the on the Earth's surface, where the humans have it, it is like point zero 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 three percent, which basically means it's non-existent on the surface of the Earth. It is leaking out of Earth's core deep underneath the ocean at pretty substantial rates. There's something going on. It's essentially the remnants of the nuclear energy that created this planet ions ago. Okay. It's so the point is, is extremely rare 
Scientists believe that it is extremely valuable, especially as an energy source, to power nuclear reactions that could be the secret to space travel. Um, it's an incredibly powerful energy source that we can't get on the on the Earth. Uh, and as we all know, deep deep ocean uh, exploration is more difficult than space exploration. Sure. Now there is a place that it's incredibly abundant, and that's on the moon. And what makes that interesting is that we are now in 2023 in the second uh, space race to the moon, and it looks like China is going to beat us there. And lots of people are saying, well, why now? Mm -hmm. Why the hell go to the moon in 2020 again? again? Yeah. Like, it's not it, – it, it's it's – but the theory is that both of us are trying to get there because we need helium-3 to power these reverse engine. We figured out how to reverse engineer them, mm. and now we're like, you got to have a nuclear reaction to power these things. Why are they, they just use the lightning from the clock tower? Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Okay, so one point twenty one gigawatt. That's yeah, right. So. Yeah, yeah. But it also would explain because something that people have said for years is why are these uh, non-human intelligent life forms mm. in the ocean? Well, they're in the ocean because that's where all the helium three is. That's the sort of secret to space travel in terms of a a, a safe nuclear energy source that can power these crafts um, the way they need to be powered. So we're going to the moon to try to grab this stuff before China does. Although. Interesting. So that's one theory of, of... And I've talked to an astronaut about helium-3. Uh, I was real drunk at a wedding. <laughs> and I asked him. Uh, I, I put my foot in my mouth real bad. It was like right after that uh, last shuttle explosion happened. Years ago, years ago. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, do you know those guys? How, and he was like... How old were you? When the, yeah. I was old enough to know better. I was like, you know these guys? He's like, yeah, we were like, uh, it's like a small crew. We were great friends. I was like, my bad. Uh, what do you know about Helium-3 on the moon? Uh, and he, yeah, he was like, yeah, this shit's serious. So like, yeah, I think Helium-3 is like big, big stuff we need to pay attention to for sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm more of a fan. I'm a little bit of a hipster. I'm more of a fan of helium two. I oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> helium two isn't stable though. Helium three is the only one with two uh, the stable isotopes. It is. It I is. I like how the finale. Went <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, that. I, and then, but the idea and the effort of keeping this out of the public's purview and the public's Again, right, knowledge, right? Because. It, it, I don't know if you've seen people are literally just putting their iPhones on telescopes and taking crystal clear pictures of the surface of the moon. Yeah, it's insane. Yes. And then you're like, okay, that's definitely a building. I don't know if it, maybe it's just me. That's an L shaped. No, that's a bucket. That's well, like government. The shit, the, the hovering above it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's also, like, <laughs> well, nobody ever addresses like, okay, so you know how that the Stephen Greer, who seems like a bit of a wackadoo yeah. to me, but his thing wasn't he doing some when he had that documentary about that disclosure class when he could teach yeah. you how to beckon oh, these oh the uh what's it called fucking I, ce5 I called. ce5 where you basically but summon ufos there's multiple videos of them of people shooting those like what they do in that video i've seen other ones of people just watching something really closely just race through the sky yeah, yeah. At, at incredible yeah. speeds and yeah it's on it's you know it comes on my tiktok or it comes on my youtube and i'm like so this is just nobody ever addresses those. Like there's, that's the other thing about when they're like, well, "Where's the videos?" It's like, well, there's one, and then you have the Go Fast and the Kimball, the, yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. Gimbal. And then also, I remember that if you just scour YouTube, like I remember I saw one of a TikTok of, of, of a Tic Tac that was just hovering. I don't know if I mentioned this guys to you guys before, and this it's just this girl randomly filming it, and I'm like. Yeah, this could be CGI, but this thing has like 150 views. Um, oh right, yeah. and nobody's watching, and <laughs> yeah. it's not certified, and it didn't. You know, she's not saying I put it through that yeah, program yeah. that Shane was talking about. So I think it's just like it's all there. I think all this stuff is there, or like that Turkish that Turkish video is like insane. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was apparently that group that there was a the video group from Turkey that was like, yeah, it wasn't edited in any way. Yeah. It's a real video. It's like not and a cruise people, ship. Like at the top yeah. of a ship. And yeah, it's yeah. Like, all right. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So um, I think it's like all this stuff is there. Like like I said, if you could grab all of this and put it, I wonder how, how much, how, what, what size, what space, a legitimate sounding and legitimate seeming information about this topic and uh, depending on what angle you're going on even if it's military or just you know third encounter 
you take all the information based off all of it. Mm -hmm. How much space would it fill up? You know what I'm saying? Like how oh. much, how much space, like what, 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 I think if you had it in front of you, you'd go, this seems like a pretty reasonable argument. Like, right. You yeah. Yeah. Class yeah right. In high school, you'd be like, okay, you win the fucking debate. The yeah, but, it, but, it, but the problem with that is that the people that, are the hardest to convince are the least likely to sift through all that evidence. Right. And then yeah. what they want is they want to be told the truth. That's most of the people in the world mm -hmm. from a source that they trust. And therein lies the problem is that over the past, since the age of the internet, uh, trust has been eroded uh, completely. I mean, I was right. at a, I mean, I was at a gas pump and I was filling up. And the person on the other side of the pump was just topping their shit off. You know, I could, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you really, to I didn't know who, I was like, you really topping that thing off. And this woman pokes around. She goes, yeah, you don't. And I'm like, no, it's bad for your engine. Yeah. And she's like, says who? And I'm like, just Google it. And she's like, Google's not infallible. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no. I'm like, Google's okay. not a person. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah. Google is just reporting what experts say about the, the car engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but like in my head, I, I, I realized at that moment, like she doesn't believe anything, anything no. that she reads on the internet. Like it has to come from some other source from her, whether that's her her pastor yeah maybe the or, pastor don't top off yeah so like so i don't made up her mind first and she read read stuff later yes, she, she yeah. makes up her mind i mean we saw this during covid where like i think i trust science and mm -hmm. scientists it doesn't mean they're infallible but i trust right. them sure Same. but there's 75 million people in this country that are like i don't i don't believe i don't believe science unless they tell me what i already think is true right and that's the reality what we live in is right the people that we all three of us and most people listening to this pod would sit with that evidence mm -hmm. and look at it. I've for I've sat with the nine eleven evidence, the official record. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, right. I but this stuff when I sit with all of it, I'm like, there there's something here here. Yeah, but but, but that's not. 150 million Americans are never going to right. do that. And I'm glad that you said 150 because you have those 75 that are a certain way, and then you have more because like I told my friend this weekend i was like oh you've been keeping up with the ufo stuff he goes yeah and i was like well it's he's the whistleblower it's a, like a big deal he goes yeah but with all the cameras with all the cameras around the world you and you're telling me now why wouldn't we yeah, see I mean, stuff the cameras that, that film it all exactly the time? exactly i was just like right. uh you're a lost cause i'm never going to be able to convince you that this shit's real because you're just like uh everyone's got a phone in their pocket i'm like but they're shit cameras they're not filming what we're seeing yeah, people get really mad when somebody films a, a <laughs> a non uh human intelligent life craft going like Mach two and they're like, that's pretty blurry. And I'm yeah, like, it's probably a bug <laughs> close to the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you only get one little piece of it? Yeah. It's going by <laughs> yeah. faster than <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's why they, you know, every clip of those is like, oh go like people on an air show didn't realize it, but they saw you have yes, you know, yeah. So here's yeah. the thing. I think also what you were saying is exactly right. That's why I think you can trust most of the people not to even hear about it, even if you had. Yeah, granted, the president comes out and says it, and and, and yeah, that's going to hit a lot of the country. But but even this whistleblower, and and you get some follow up information here. People's attention spans and apathy is an all time high, and yes. the yeah. same way that yeah, you had different political parties after uh, the JFK, but not even close to the amount of division and complete non-compliance that's, that's happening now. So right. you, when you, the, even, even the people that hated JFK were affected by JFK right. getting shot. So that's why right. you had, that's like I said before, the end of Camelot, right? And then you, and then, and then, the, then what, 50, 60 years later, the, the country kind of erodes into what it is now, which is a v v such a, oh my God, just individualized, just uh, mm. everybody has opinions type scenario where nobody believes anything. Just the, the mistrust has gone through the yes. fucking roof on a large enough section that you're going to either get people who don't care or are not going to believe it. And that will be enough of a, of a sample in this, in this experiment on if they get the real information to see that it's going to be as big of a deal as, it's not going to affect things as much as you as you think it is. Right. The only thing it will affect, like we talked about before, is the people who make the decisions on what happens with 
the markets and with global politics and yeah. with stuff like that. So the serious people, the ones that are going to go, holy shit, what? And then they're going to, and then right. their decisions they make going forward is what's going to take down societies. I believe. If, yeah. if it did that, you know, that sounds sure, dramatic, sure. but you know what I mean? Where it's like, that's where, that's where the, the real effect comes from. People who are paying attention, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, part of me wants to say that I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. But I think my gut tells me what happens next is nothing for a while, nothing for a while. Mm -hmm. And then people like us uh, and, and most of our listeners who sort of stay at least somewhat abreast of this, it, you, you know, you see an article or a, a thread on it eventually every every couple of weeks. You know, we'll say, well, yeah, this is just part of what happened back in 2023. Mm -hmm. This is more of the same from the whistleblower and they're finally getting to it. But but. For most people, you're going to have to tell them, right? Like they're going to say, why are we just hearing about this now? And I'm like, we're not just hearing about it now. Right. We've been steadily right. getting more and more honest answers from the government, almost to slowly stress test the system until they can finally just come out and be done with it. So it's not out of, out of nowhere. Right. And then again, there's old school people from the 50s and 60s that say, we had experts in the 50s and 60s. We had an, inv an invasion of... Washington DC where there was front page of every newspaper in the country mm -hmm. and we were going to get to the bottom of it. And, and 60 years later, we've never been told what happened that day. Yeah. You know, so. Right. Um, it's tough. And then also no. what you get from these, I, I wanted to bring up before we get out of here, sure. I don't know what time you guys want to stop. I'm down. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. 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 Um, but I meant to mention, did you see the daily mail follow up? This is the problem that. Oh arises yes. With yeah, yes. And here's the thing, like even even a little bit of the the Grutch, the Grutch was it Grutch? Grutch, Grush, Dan Grutch, Grush, Grush, yeah, Grush, Dave Grush, Grush. David Grush. Yeah. Even yeah. part of his interview is, is a little bit fantastical. Yes. And then they talk about the non-humans. That's when people, including myself, will check out. Part of my brain will check out, but like there's things about it I believe. Um, but I will say there's some lawyer, I think it's Sheehan. Uh, yes. who, uh, there was a Daily Mail yeah. article about this guy with two other follow-up sources that he has that he represents. And one of the worst parts about the UFO world is you got to get better, more stable looking people. Like even when Lou Elizondo came out and he had that soul patch and everyone's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. doing? Yeah. This guy, he looks like, he looks like, a, uh, he looks like Bob Baffert, the horse trainer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a big fan he's of Roy like, Donk. Like, all disheveled and he's got, like, he's got his, his communion day suit on. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> he kind of has these people that he says he's representing. I spoke to Grush, but I'm representing these two guys that tell me they had encounters with these craft. And the one of the things that's quoted in it is so fun to hear, but it makes me go, get the, f like, yes, my, yeah. my head can't get around it. It's literally right. bending space time. You guys probably know about yeah. this. You might've yeah. talked about it already. No, we haven't. Know, no, I apologize. Yeah. We haven't. Uh, that one of these investigators is one of these military personnel who went into one of these craft. The thing was 30 feet long, but when he went into it, it did something to space time where the size of it was the size of a football. Yeah. Stadium. Doctor who style. Doctor, yeah. 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 Like Doctor Who style, yeah, yeah. and this guy was thrown off his—not thrown off his game, but he was—he uh, was nauseous when he got out. He was dizzy. He thought he was only in there for what a few minutes. He got out. It was four hours later or something. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. it, it distorted his idea of, of reality. Now, I believe me. I'm almost. I I went okay. This is Daily Mail first of all, right. and this is. Uh, this guy kind of looks like he um he looks like a uh, uh, better call Saul but sure. in the UFO world mm -hmm. and uh so I'm judging it based off that and also to hear that I don't think that because of our understanding of our own physics I don't understand that's the thing that's what the, the problem is going to be for a lot of people is right I I can't get my head around it I right. cannot right. it might very well be possible it sounds so wacky that it probably is because if you were going to lie you'd have a more believable lie. right like if exactly. this guy really wanted to get noticed he'd be like i'm talking to these guys and they said blah, blah, blah. And, he, and you really if you were a good liar you could navigate how to get attention but also having the most people believe you right this is so wacky that i'm like uh there's somebody's either pranking them or or, or yeah I, I, i'm like i even to understand the idea of it <laughs> I, like, yeah i can't like, get into it like if you want people to believe you'd be like it was actually smaller on the inside um, yeah, right. it's actually just a room. And I, I, yeah, I, it shrunk me down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kids but what's what's crazy about that is like Neil Tyson. As much as a lot of us don't like that guy because he doesn't uh, necessarily speak to these things, he has said he. There's an interview on YouTube where he describes how things like that could happen, based on 
uh, just the time loss is based on the the gravity of something causes time to dilate. So that makes sense. And then if you think about like if these people are using portals, who's to say that the door to the ship isn't a portal to a different dimension where you're walking into a warehouse versus you're walking into a ship. So really um, consider right. the ships just right. a door. So it's like we're having to right. do these own ment- our own mental gymnastics based on these weird physics things we may have read on Reddit or somewhere to understand it. But like the common lay person was like, what the, no way this, this doesn't make any you know, sense. This really, that reminds me of at least what is purported to have happened in the Philadelphia experiment, the famous oh, yeah. Montauk project mm-hmm. where they were messing around with what they thought was radar invisibility. It turned out to be time travel. At least that's the, the story. Mm-hmm. And it would, it would make sense to me that they found one of these crafts. They thought they had reverse engineer. They thought they knew what it did. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's going to look invisible on radar. And, and then in reality, it got pulled into the gravitational time of another space. Oh, interesting. And then pulled hmm. back. And they're like, yeah, we, we had no idea what we were doing. We were, yeah, we yeah. were mucking around and we really, really screwed things up. And that, that's where, like, what you're talking about is these crafts are not, ju- they're not, they're not, better airplanes than how, as right. how we think of them. They are some sort of trans medium thing that, mm-hmm. that yes, that's a good way to, that's right. I didn't, you don't even think of that. I you always forget that. Yes. That's what's happening. Yeah. It's almost like you're in, it's almost like you've st- like, what could happen with like the gold people from, from guardians of the galaxy, like no, right, yeah. the gold people. Yes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and like, what have you gotten one of those ships? But you just end up where they are, where they, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're controlling the ships from like giant uh, area, you know? Yeah. I think, I think that's where, you know, the, we keep coming back to this where the 150 million people that are not ready to hear this, if, if these non-intelligent, sorry, I keep saying non-intelligent human. No, they're definitely non, intelligent. Non-human <laughs> intelligent. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> yeah, that if, if, us. If, these, if these beings are just like another creature with better technology than us that seem disinterested in us, I think my mother-in-law, for example, can, can incorporate that into her deeply held religious beliefs and move on. Sure. Mm-hmm. This might be hard, but mm-hmm. the, the, her her priest will say God created everything. He created these and that's just how the universe is. Right. Yep, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But if it's like, no, this points at a, a, a reality, a physical reality that is completely different than what we've ever understood. That's, that's something that I think people are going to be like, wait, so this whole multiverse thing is real. This well, whole- both can be true though. And you can only tell, you could always choose which information you tell. Right. No, I think that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I think that is exactly right. Um, well, it's even even if you're doing where, you know, I think a lot of what comes down to is, I think that was one of the theories as well, where um, one of the, not whistleblowers, one of the people they talked to, and I'm sorry, I have not backup information, but wasn't somebody saying, oh, 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 it was the one you sent me, Shane, uh, the, the, the 4chan. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, the didn't name, that the, one say it's yeah. consciousness-based? Yeah, Consci- yes. Consciousness-based. Yeah. So the, the consciousness-based craft, consciousness-based. So what if it is, you know, our consciousness as humans is what's anchoring us to this planet, and that's what's right. also lending itself to not being able to go outside of that, that realm. Yeah. And, and then you're right. Like, it's to be honest, it's like it, it kind of um, – what it should do for a lot of religious people, especially Catholics, is kind of uh, kind of uh, strengthen your belief in heaven because that's kind right. of the the science version of what that would be is right. being like, hey, this is just this in, this this interdimensional thing would be like where you go to next. And yes, you were right. There is something else. There's right. a, there's, it's yeah. science based, but there's something else there. You know? yeah. yeah. So I, you, I think people would still have a hard time, but I think that's kind of what the way it's going because even like we said with that craft. I don't know how what consciousness plays into it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, but it seems like you're, it has to be part of the reason of why this guy was so fucked up from it because it completely and utterly just, just, just damaged his consciousness. Yeah. And just, just obliterated what he thought of yeah. reality, you know? Yeah. 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 It's in, uh, uh, I was just going to say, I'm reading these, I just read this book and I'm reading this uh, follow up to it. It's called Biocentrism. And mm-hmm. the, the guy postulates that everything, on earth it's not like uh, in science 
Uh, we've often focused on the physical and tangible objects of our lives, and we've left consciousness to be this thing. And Einstein struggled for a long time to prove that consciousness ties into, you know, his theories. And somebody could never make it work. A lot of scientists could never make it work. So now, there's this new hypothesis, a new theory about how life emerges: is that our consciousness is what creates everything. So there is no universe without us knowing there's a universe. So is it there's a tree fall in the woods? Do you hear it if no one's there? Well tree never fell in the woods and no it didn't make a sound because there is yeah exactly that's basically what it is like we create everything around us and i know there's the slippery slope of solipsism where solipsism where you're like well i'm the only person that exists and fuck everything else right and they they address that in the book but it's really interesting uh but it is also interesting too because i was walking around a lake near my house reading this book like a fucking nerd just uh <laughs> reading this book and there's like i i passed this guy as part of the great raleigh cleanup crew and they just clean up shit around places and uh he's like what are you reading i was like oh i'm reading this book that basically posits that uh nothing exists unless we observe it he just laughed and laughed and just walked away <laughs> and i was like oh, okay well yeah, i guess well that, now you're gone you don't exist anymore i know i was <laughs> like thanks for getting out of my head uh yeah, yeah but i was just like that's just how people are going there no one no one is willing to take that leap to go Unless it's unless I can touch it, it's not real, you know, and it's tough. It up, it's so funny. I, feel, I don't know if they this is where they go down the road with solipsism, but it's almost like solipsism with an agreed upon reality. So right, yeah, level, yeah, not with yeah. your not with your the forefront of your mind. Like the idea of you going like you don't have to actually go. I believe this is a reality. No, you're, you're never saying that. You're yes. nobody's ever saying I'm in reality right now. Right, but right. there's some other frequency thing that everybody's going sure. like, oh no, this is just an agreed upon thing based off our yes. consciousness, and we're we're manifesting this. Think about it this way: like the same way that I don't want to get into it, but like the same way that like when you talk to the physics aspect of this, mm. and, and the same way that even with your whatever your perception of things that's going on around you, and you think it's in your in your 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 immediate thoughts Mm -hmm. there could be a there could be a different section for constant thoughts where you're just like i'm i'm always i'm just there's a hum where i just believe i'm part of this Mm -hmm. this this thing that but in reality if you went stepped out of the dimension you'd be like oh you guys are just you you're all thinking that at the same time yes which is powering your your consciousness craft or whatever you want to call it exactly makes sense it does yeah 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 Yeah, i guess that i guess the danger in in that in that view um is that if if scientifically we we confirm that there is an afterlife, mm-hmm. then you know one of one of the one of the tenets of say communism, you know John Lennon, imagine there's no heaven, like that the idea of an afterlife allowed people to endure horrific conditions on this planet, right? Or it might be like, wait, I can kill myself yeah, and there's no penalty. I just, yeah. I just then then or or I'll, I will clearly fight against these aliens and die right because you're just telling me there's a that this, my consciousness goes off into this other place i mean i guess that's when i say the risk i'm saying it's the risk of all of this coming to light is that we're not really sure how it will manifest in daily life right I mean, like does, yeah does does the stock market crash do 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 people across the world say well look if if i'm in abject poverty and you're telling me that this is just all a projection of my own creation then peace i'm out yeah well i would just show them reincarnation videos and be like even if you do that you're coming back oh well, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> right? there's also a thing where it's like i think i, I don't think that would ever happen because you another thing we you have to we have to um try to figure out is and this one might be the reason why you still have the pushback from old school parts of the, the department of defense and the military and all this is because well, say say tomorrow they say, yeah, Grush is correct. We have this program. There's this is non. Everybody then it becomes the question of this is nonstop. So what's next? Right, after? right, right. And right, then right. after about how many years does it get to the reality part of the discussion that we're talking about? Because there's people yeah. that aren't even. I'll bring up some of this the the physics stuff with my girlfriend. She's like, I don't even want to think about that. Mm-hmm. I can't think about it. So I think people do. Yeah, my we're, wife's we're the same open way. to the discussion. We don't, you know, we're not physicists. I don't think either of you are, but nope. um, we're open to the discussion of it. But w- what point does the alien visitor, the the non-human thing, get down to? Okay, then where are they from? But they're from here. But but then there's then, then the, the thing about the craft is correct. Well, how does that happen? And then you keep going down the line until right. you get to a oh, so nothing actually matters. And I can <laughs> right. do whatever the fuck I want. I'm just going to go off into this next 
uh, energy form, whatever it is. Um, what would it be a next? It's a thing that's existing sure. simultaneously, yeah, yeah. maybe possibly. So maybe that's one of the reasons. And that would also coincide with like the Lou Elizondo thing where he's like, uh, a lot of these old school guys think it's demonic. Yes. Things are demonic. Yep. And then it's like, there you go. It's like, cause what it does is it, it kind of etches away at the fabric of everything you've been taught to believe for thousands of years. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, Which I just terrifying. I, I it was just terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially terrifying. And, uh, you know, Joseph Conrad, the great writer from, uh, 18th, 19th century. Uh, I mean, he talked about in heart of darkness, how, the, what the, the 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 civilization that holds man back is incredibly thin and erodes extremely quickly, mm-hmm. and I I I I think that that's why we'll never get a, a blanket full disclosure. Because I you know I mean I look at Hurricane Katrina I look at the pandemic I look at these these stress tests that we've had over the years, and I just think like plenty of people are going to be like wait this whole thing is just sort of right we've known for 90 years that there's a more powerful entity here so the government is basically a way to keep us in control and certain people in power fuck it i'm not i'm right. i'm not playing this game anymore it's not right? the aliens we have to worry about it's the people that are in power that are like i can do anything i want which they can do anyway right Any or how. you end up yeah. having in devil's advocate you have the opposite where they realize and they go oh i'm i'm part of this i'm just be thankful for the information. I'm part of this bigger thing. Mm-hmm. And that's almost true. like they were talking about the interview. He's like, Oh, we you sensibly become humans, not countries. Right. The, yeah. The, yeah. The human, yeah. The human race versus the human group, yeah. not the, which, which who knows that would ever, I, you know, I think who knows that would end up happening. Mm-hmm. I think what you ended up meeting is a, uh, you need a punk rock. <laughs> uh-huh. One of these countries that's in the in the know. You need them to just go completely rogue. Which based on this this podcast I heard about finances it might be Brazil. <laughs> yeah, Brazil yeah, is yeah. Brazil is you know, yeah. Bricks thing. Yeah, uh, China. And so they've been open like, about UFOs for a long time. Totally. Mm-hmm. And and so you need a punk rock. One of these countries to just divulge all this information because even if just go back to the interview with Crush, it's like even with um that interview he mentions it's. It, it, this is what I mean. Like the detail that he said that the first known recovery was in Italy. Yeah, 1933. Kind of tracked the yeah. Mussolini and we came and we picked it up. It's like, it's such an odd detail to be like, I'm going to just, right. if you're making it right. up. Right, yeah, yeah. You're, make, you're making up that Mussolini had this craft, even though it's in the Mussolini notes and they drew it. But no, now it's right. believable because it's like, it's like, it just seems so, too many verifiable. Right. That Things that story, it's, it's weird to go like, hey, why would if he really was making it up? Why wouldn't he be like, oh, one was the the first recovery was in the 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 forests of the Amazon, and where it cannot be checked, cannot right, really be followed, exactly. cannot, yeah, yeah. And there could be no surrounding information mm-hmm. that kind of backs it up. You'd be like, and they went. There was a two guy crew. They went and they grabbed it on a ship and they yeah. brought it back and they whatever the fuck. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you're going yeah. Italy. That's your that's your like, hey, thirty three started in Italy. Yeah, yeah. I mean it. it we we've discussed and you, you know, we, we I, I'm convinced that there was some sort of spacecraft that was in the possession of Nazi Germany, the Nazi Bell. Mm-hmm. Um, people thought it was a time travel device, but again, space travel is inevitably time travel in some right. regard. They're very very right, similar. Right, because gravity based stuff. That we yeah. Right, we're talking about. And so their their 1939 understanding of something like this would be that like. It, it seems to time travel people mm-hmm. and and, right. and there there is some evidence that the u.s sort of staged a a battle on the front in order to then sneak into berlin and steal this device there there's some evidence that in fact the nazis surrendered in the war to move this device to antarctica and then there's all these theories about there being mm-hmm. a base in antarctica there's certainly an incredible nazi presence in south america which sure. again fits in with this whole idea that there's <laughs> Yeah, kind of, yeah I mean, point. so so yeah. like all these different little pieces of the puzzle start to sort of like make sense once you buy into like, oh, now I now I get it, right? This has been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's really shaped our modern world in a way that most people really don't understand. Um, and and now whether whether we as a as a people sort of just admit it and figure out what's next, um, whether that's a completely new government of some kind. 
I know people fear fear a, a sort of world government, a world order. Sure. But if we are all a subspecies, that's probably what makes the most sense. Right, right, right. I don't know who's in charge of that. Or I'm fine if we just sort of go back to an agrarian people. That's my, my jam right there. I'm is, is if the population of humans is about 15 million across the world and we just sort of farm and live in harmony like the aliens created us to do. <laughs> right. Ah, <laughs> um, uh, right. I mean, <laughs> which is, they gave us this, uh, this, these powers just to do what? To right. Study the animals and just, to- <laughs> yeah, they need, yeah, yeah, yeah. they needed farmers, you know, they, this is a, this is a, this is a giant farm of a planet. And, and instead yeah. we, we grew like, like fire ants and now we're problematic. What if we're just an app? We started as Farmville. And then uh, <laughs> we ended up where we are today. Well, let me ask you guys this. What do you, did, what he said about, because even at one point, he isn't saying where these, he knew where these things came from. He's just saying that they were recovered. Mm-hmm. We know it's non-human intelligence. Uh, him bringing up the part about interdimensional, which is, did it change your guy's mind about, about um, the source of this stuff? So, it's, so, you know, either, you know, like we said, it's like, it's from the water, it's from different dimensions, it's from, it's from other planets or it's all of the above. Right. Um, I don't Based on all this water stuff, I, I, I was talking to you guys about this. I'm like, I, I had a thought one day, I thought it was pretty good where I said, what if when evolution happened, when evolution happened, if it went both ways, yes, like when you know mm-hmm. the, when the, when the the, the 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 frog came out of the water and the amphibians started having grabbing legs and eyes, their eyes got complicated. What if it went also went they went deeper Dan- into deeper, the ocean and yeah. then just got, yeah. got more and more advanced, and they've been that's, and that would also explain why this has been here for so long because it's just right, it, it, you know, uh, uh, and they had, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. No, I think that's a, uh, it's very astute. I think that we've talked about that quite a few times. It's like, of course it would make sense. Why do we, we always as humans think we're so special that we're the only ones that exist on this planet that have a higher level of intelligence, but there's nothing to say over the eons and millennia that we've been on this planet, that something hasn't gone and basically come the same direction as we did just in a different, uh, place that they inhabited yeah and of course they're going to develop craft to leave that place like their ships should be no different than ours with us going into space uh we like we have submarines they have air marines they have all that stuff and can they get deep enough where i don't know can i can they grab helium three yeah right (laughs) sure they can yeah Yeah, I, I I, i don't well i don't my problem with that is that i think and i don't think it's it's inconsistent with what you just said I, I sense that what whatever these uh, creatures are, that they've been on this planet hundreds of thousands of years longer. And I'm I'm fine with the date. You know, we used to say humans are like 5,000 oh, years you, old. So you're saying my, I limit my thing to human existence. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, like, yeah. like I, I don't know exactly when the first human was on this well, planet. Well, they just I, discovered caves or something yeah. 100,000 100, years before we thought well, humans existed. But, that, with like, intelligent drawings and everything. Yeah, and so I, our history is fucked. Yeah, yeah, I agree that the history of what we now call Homo sapiens is off. Wrong. But I think these creatures predated that. Now, whether they evolved or on this planet or whether they came here we do know this about earth it's an extremely rare rare biosphere mm-hmm. like we we have now looked at billions of planets which is a lot there's not a lot that look like earth like we when every time we find a goldilocks planet it's like when people find another prime number it's like holy shit we found another <laughs> like they're they're really rare it's like yeah. it, it is they're extremely rare and if we're discovering them rare i just think that a million years ago, a million of our years, mm-hmm. right? That that somebody was like, well, that's a really good planet for sure. life, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I just think these things have been here for, it makes so much of the history that is inexplicable, <laughs> you know, finding gear, geared electronically charged devices in the bottom of the ocean that predate any civilization we know about. Mm-hmm. Like all the things with Atlantis and the the weird gravitational and time fluxes in the ocean and things, it all just kind of makes sense that something intelligent has been here for sure. a long, long, yeah. long time. I th- yeah. I believe I think you're right. Yeah, and then you go to look at like then you start adding the woo, which is you know the CIA's astral projection and remote viewing, and they said, oh, uh, there were beings on Mars that had a, a atomic cataclysm, and we can 
look at Mars and a NASA scientist said, oh, there's clearly uh, a nuclear uh, event on Mars uh, based on what's happened there. And the remote viewing says they left that planet. Did they come here? Maybe they came here eons ago when Mars was losing mm -hmm. its shit and they were like, we got to go to a better planet. Uh, and again, that gets in the woo and the weirdness of it all, but it's like, yeah, but we're, it's like we're already there. So there's stuff to back it up. Sure. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I always said that about, I think I maybe said it to you guys where it's like, isn't Mars, doesn't Mars kind of look like a planet that got so big, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all the dust got kicked up and sure. brought back Yeah, down. it looks like a sunburned, you know, Irishman, yeah. you know, like, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, me at Rockaway Beach. used to be alive, but you're burnt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are crispy. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this before I go. Did you guys already talk about Las Vegas? No. No, so we yeah, we, we, that's a great way to, to sort of, so we, for those listening that don't know, uh, there was a YouTube video put out by uh, a family in Las Vegas, mostly by one kid. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, in the video, and, and what hit, there's a narration of the story, and then it's interspliced with police a body cam footage, uh, door cam footage from the area, and other 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 sources. And essentially, there's a a sonic boom like sound that's audible on. And there was a sound before that that sounded mechanical and weird before it landed. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. before it blew up or crashed, whatever. And then they call nine one one, and you can hear the nine one one call in this YouTube video. They say there are eight foot alien like creatures in their backyard. The police come. The body cam footage. The police says normally we wouldn't even have showed up, but my partner saw something. Right. So we're here to investigate this, and and since then there have been some people that say it seems kind of hokey. Uh, but there's other people that seem like this seems pretty legit, especially in the context of yeah. what's been going on. James so. Fox, who, uh, you know, has made uh, a number of great documentaries about UFOs said, Oh, it's real. Uh, I've been contacted by these people, but then like within minutes he changed his story and was like, ah, it's probably a hoax. So I'm like, well, they get to you or was this actually a hoax? So. Yeah. So that's, that's the, the most recent kind of close encounter that we, we had this past week too. Mm -hmm. I think uh, James Fox, I kind of think, is on the level. I, I, yeah. I mean, I think he's on the level. I, I, I will say this. If it's a – it's very poss – is it possible that the body cam is for real and the and the kid is just a hoax? Oh, like interesting. The body yeah, cams, yeah. They, pulled, they called an audible and they went like, oh, we can fuck with everybody. <laughs> right, yeah. And put, put my, my tall uncle in the back behind <laughs> yeah. this forklift over here. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing I kept – last night I kept – scrolling through the videos of what they say is the shadow. Yeah. Of the it's so funny. And, and at one point you can see one behind the forklift and yeah. one seems to be trying to, to work it like to get a union job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's now a Somebody meme now. It's, it on... Red is making so much fun of it now, but anyway, sorry. Yeah. No, Reddit, I saw a clip, uh, a post of somebody saying, it's a hoax. The guy, his YouTube channel, it's called Alien, yes. the, yeah. Alien uh, yeah. Artifact, whatever it's called. And it's just a, it's a, a joke. It does seem very, it seems like a joke. It's also like, it's it's like that exact, um, I'm only going to give you X amount of this. But, you know, the, the only thing I will say on the side of it is like, so the whole family decided. Right. Like that, that's why the whole family just decides. Unless you could have also had the, the kid with his buddies doing it and he told the family and he messed with the sure. family as well. And maybe that's why they can't get these, this family for an interview anymore because he finally told them, I'm just messing right. with you. And they're like, we're not fuck yeah. you. We're not talking. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. Who yeah. Knows? But, but that, that body cam video, if that's real, that happened. Yeah. I know? mean, they definitely the showed up. Boom. The sonic boom. The sound, something definitely land, like crashed. And the, and, the, and the police partner did see something. Yeah. So, um, I mean, did the, did the kid just seize upon, cause the video he gives, I mean, I don't know. Did, these things happen and he say, Hey, we should call the police and, and do this and try to just create a story out of it. Mm. Um, and I get, I, I guess that's the problem. I, I think that with a lot of people who hear these things is that it's hard to believe enough. And then when you immediately try to monetize it, cause I think they're trying, they trying to right. sell a script and they're trying to, some, oh, somebody wants to buy yeah. their story. Right. right. So yeah. it's like, but that's a quick turnaround. They would have had to have this thought before the shit crashed or they were like, Okay, we filmed it. Two hours later, they're like, "Okay, let's make it a thing." But they right. did they film it as well? I I so thought he films with a body cam and the ring camera with the big flash. Yeah, no, oh, they, that's they, right. So they didn't film it. Yeah, you're right. No, he yeah. didn't. They, he they, did. they they just did the nine one one call. Interesting. That's and, right. And, so and then he could have been like a. They heard it. Maybe something did. Maybe it was just a. 
asteroid bait, whatever it was. And then this kid went, oh, my perfect opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just always have a script months. in the pocket ready sure. to go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say about show business anyway? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 This kid just wanted a general with uh, Paramount. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Titanic was written 20 years before it actually happened. So I, I get it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I oh, I just watched some documentary about that a while ago. Oh yeah, right. oh yeah. I mean, we were talking about. I just watched uh, Avatar two, the way of I hate the, that movie, the water, uh, and Guardians three can both eat shit because they both were about animal torture. I hate both of those movies. Oh, anyway, okay. go ahead. Well, the uh, you know, there's lots. There's lots of people think that James Cameron has been poking around the 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 deep ocean enough that he's he's realizing that the the that the story of Avatar is about a uh, indigenous alien people, mm-hmm. the blue people. We are the invading white people that are causing untoward sure. damage to the earth, and he's sort of trying to get us to buy into this idea, and he knows this from his deep, deep I mean, sea yeah, exploration. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, he's got I, a sub. Uh, he, went, he went pretty deep. He did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he might have met halfway. Yeah. 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 I think that's... I, 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 okay, this is my final thought. Okay. I, I think the biggest stumbling block to all of this is that every every time I, I, I dig in this stuff, and we, there have been alien encounters with school children where the message from the aliens was like, stop fucking the planet up. Yeah. Right. Like, we can live here together with you guys can do whatever you want just don't blow the planet up yeah and so it fits in with every single thing that people think about this yeah yeah and 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 <laughs> we're gonna blow the planet up yeah, so there's people that just like no i'm gonna keep driving this ford 250 i, I don't care yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm you know like yeah. i like Montana children are suing the state because the, the their state is being destroyed and their people are like, yeah, we don't give a shit. We're going to take the coal out of the land no matter what it does. And as long as that's the message is that we got to take better care of this planet or these, these, these aliens are going to wipe us off mm-hmm. the face of the earth, then we're going to lose that argument. Yeah. Like it's got to be, you got to, I, I don't want to do a bit, but like, you got to think like that. You got to convince people that the aliens are here to to get rid of uh, immorality. You know, oh, you right, got yeah. you got you got to say these are very moral aliens that don't like homosexuality or something. Get people to buy. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want that. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> right, right. These, these, these aliens won't drink Bud Light. But yeah, these yeah, are like they yeah, hate yeah. Bud Light. Like yeah. you know, aliens drink Bud Heavy or something. I don't yeah, know what it is, yeah, but yeah, like. Yeah. Like, like that's the only way that we're going to get people on board. And I, I just think that it's, and well, we'll see what plays out. Okay. I think that Congress is going to kick the can down the road. We're not going to get straight answers. Shane, Shane did say maybe it becomes a campaign issue where certain, Ooh, where certain, like a movie, cer- yeah, certain, pres- certain presidential candidates say, if elected, I will shoot straight and I will get to the bottom of this and I will tell the American people what but we they know. they will not get elected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they'll, yeah, yeah they'll I keep them. How yeah. many, I, I gotta be honest, I would, I would really pay attention to the, the UAP candidate. Yeah. I'd be like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. Who, what? Yeah. 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 Uh, but the, I think that what's going to happen, I, uh, so what's going to happen, I think, is um, what, I'm, what should really happen, because that guy, Burchett, whatever the, the congressman, mm-hmm. yeah, he was saying, what you need is more guys like this. He's like, yeah. I knew this was happening. I said this a while ago, which he, which he did. And so under that whistleblower law, I, I, I he's not the, fr- I don't know if he's the first, he's not the first one under, because it's, it's pretty new, right? It's, it's. Mm-hmm. Of no ramifications. Yeah, if just if they just the and and this guy uh, Grusher, however you say his name, he was one of the authors of this bill, so he helped get this passed. Apparently, yeah. So he knows all the ins and outs of not getting screwed by this whistleblower right. thing. So he can he knows what to say and what not. To I say. think if you're willing, I wonder to, if he yeah. had this in mind when he was making the bill. I think he, he must have. Yeah, if you're willing to tell have. the truth under oath, and I think that's important. If you're willing to tell the truth under oath, then you should be protected. In this regard, mm-hmm. like we should yeah, have absolutely. a we should have a method where you say I will go under oath and tell you what I know, and admit evidence, and you will get protection from the government if you do that. Mm-hmm. And what you can only hope is that this crush thing emboldens some more of these guys. They, even if even if the guys from that that Daily Mail article are, are for real and and they are being represented by that that wackadoo lawyer, whatever his yeah. deal is, yeah. like 
you would hope it's like, all right, now, hey, he did it. He showed his face. He's not dead. He's not, you know, it's like, now do you have actual stuff here? Do you have something to show? Mm-hmm. Then I, what, I think there's uh, there's safety in numbers when it comes to this thing. Sure. It, it changes yeah. the narrative more and more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. Apparently, there's a bunch more whistleblowers. There's one that just came out, again, covered by the Daily Mail, I think, which is a little weird. There's a guy that was like, uh, in the jungle, we came upon a craft. It was full of guns, and they were... U.S. people basically smuggling guns and UFOs, and they were like, don't say shit, we'll kill you. And that's another one. It's like, well, that's another whistleblower account, but that was... Wait, what? That just yeah, came out as just well. just came out, yeah. It's crazy. So Wait, then, in the Amazon? I don't know if it's Amazon, sm- it was some jungle, jungle. but that he came upon a UAP, a UFO, and there were black ops. He was black ops, I think, and he came upon U.S. servicemen that were like, if you say shit about this, we'll murder you, and it was a craft full of guns, and they were basically in a country where they didn't belong. Uh, and that just it came was out reverse as well. engineered or no, they didn't, oh, they, didn't they don't know but he was like uh, so that's another whistle so there's more whistleblowers coming forward but stuff like that is crazy <laughs> that sounds I don't understand that, the no. advantage they were <laughs> smuggling it in the it was like US no, no, they, made UFO so just imagine the US uh, made. <laughs> imagine uh, what was it that Reagan got in trouble for uh Star Wars. No, the smuggling of uh, guns and drugs. Iran Contra. Iran Contra. Imagine that, but with UFOs. Yeah. I think that's basically what he was describing. Basically oh. trading oh, wow. guns just for like a, whatever. Like, a, like he just kind of stumbled into Wakanda. Yeah, he stumbled. It's like, yes. Oh, I see. I it, never, yeah. it was a trade-off. Basically, he ran into this thing that was going down, and they were like, don't don't say shit. So, <laughs> But that just came out, too. But again, the Daily Mail covers it, and it's like, what's what? I don't know. So, yeah, that's uh, so... Exactly. That, 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 really, at least we have enough sensibility to yes. be like, Daily Mail. Daily yeah, Mail. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my final thought, uh, I was complaining to Justin before the pod started about a local bar I went to the other day. I was like, I, I went there once. Uh, it was kind of weird. It was just a bunch of weirdos. We went in there last time, went into the bar, but everybody, even the bartender, was outside smoking. I was like, okay, it's just a, a towny bar. Everyone's having a good time. So we went there this weekend, and uh, one of the guys there, uh, I'm going to burn this place down. I'm very angry about everything that happened. Uh, but one of the guys ordered a Bud Light bottle but said, pour it in a glass because I don't want people to know what I'm drinking. Uh, and I think this perfectly describes the American populace. It's like... Sure, there may be UFOs, there may be aliens, but I'm going to put it in a glass that makes it fit my reality, and I'm just going to go with this. Sure, this other stuff exists, but I don't I don't talk to those people, I don't do that, and I don't want my friends to know I talk to aliens, so I'm just going to drink my Bud Light out of a glass. I buy, I, I buy that. Yeah. I, it's almost how I felt about Catholics. For I always said this thing about Catholics, where I was like, if you took any Catholic, I'm 45, if you took most people my age, most people, mm-hmm. and you got them, and they were Catholic, and you brought them into a room... And you went like, well, you guys don't really think that it, it is what it is. Like, it, they didn't really, all this happened, and this is real, and that's real, and blah, blah, blah. I think you'd have, and they, like, there's no ramifications. Nobody will know you said this. Mm-hmm. I think they'd be like, no, I do it for my mom, or I do it sure. for this. So, yeah, same kind of deal where it's like, hey, I'll just I'll right. play ignorant for the sake of things going on the way they've been yeah, going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, they, yeah, they've done studies where, uh, with anonymous admission of UFOs versus non-anonymous mm-hmm. where like like you're known you have to put your name down versus you don't have to put your and, and people are much higher to admit there are ufos when they're not when they don't sure. think that it's traceable to them. right yeah of course yeah. exactly because that's why you, that, that also explains this whistleblower yep. conundrum where it's like this guy he comes out he gets called a kook even though he served, served in sure. Afghanistan. yeah and he seems completely normal yeah, yeah, yeah. it's insane I, believe me man it's like it's it, Here's the thing, taking all the things we know in the public eye about this thing, even putting that aside, the amount of sightings, the amount of information uh, that's, if you take the amount of information of, of, of people seeing something that hasn't been talked about on the internet or whatever, it is, like, I think that's just endless as well. Yeah. As well. Like, I, I, when I did, I tried to do my own UFO thing and I, you know, I screwed up on filming them and all that, but I found like six people in comedy and in my life, like one of them was my cousin that I never knew saw something. Wow. Like, it's like, it's just, it's endless. Yeah. There's too right. much. It's the, it's, it's so present. There's too much of it. I yeah. just, right. don't get me wrong. I know they, a lot of these things get explained by certain stuff, drunk, whatever it is, but I think you have to, then you run the statistics and then you go, well, then not this. this right. Is, this is for real. Also, like we've said a million times before. Yeah. You know, also, I don't know if your six people would bear this out, but, in my experience, the 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 UFO sightings for individuals go dramatically higher 
the more time you've spent in the open ocean. Sure. And the more time you've spent in remote areas of the country, meaning yeah. wilderness. Now, if you've lived primarily in the city, either because of light pollution or just the concentration of people, or there's just more going on in the sky around urban areas. So it's harder to sort of pinpoint something weird, but the farther you get out, Mm-hmm. And especially in the ocean, <laughs> then the numbers, the percentage of people who've seen something unexplainable just goes to the roof. Yeah. Well, yeah, totally. Well, two of them I had doesn't fit in. One of them was in in Queens. It was Greg Rogel, the, the comedian. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. And he saw a thing for a long time hovering above, uh, 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 and, and he was in Forest Hills, Queens. And then one of them was my cousin, and that was a cruise, so that totally fits. Yep. Where where he they tried they did the flash on the camera. I don't know mm-hmm. if I told you guys about that. Mm-hmm. No. He tried to take up. They tried not to take a picture. I think they're trying to take a picture, but it was like everything else was pitch black except for this. You know, there was so much. There was wasn't there was no artificial light in the area. Right. And this the the flash on the camera went, and this thing flashed back. Oh wow! Jeez. Oh, and that's the, that's and then the other story he had was in Jersey. Almost like how that ring camera looked. That's mm-hmm. how I picture. He had almost like that that sonic boom sound you're talking about. Had that sound going constant. He woke up to it one night with that, that amount of light going around his house, and he was trying to figure out wow. where the hell this was coming from. If it was right. if it was a helicopter, or whatever it was, and he couldn't. And he went downstairs to his his first floor, and he almost went outside to check it out. And he was like, something told him in his gut, do not go, don't go outside. Oh like he wow, just was terrified. And then uh, one of them was in Virginia. It was um. It was uh, it was Tony Woods, and Tony Woods saw something when he was 17 in Virginia that he could not identify. Wow. And then the other one was uh, freaking my buddy that I told you. Uh, I don't know if I think I might have told you or not on um, the pod, Shane, about my buddy who was in Long Island and how he had a loss of time thing. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. His yeah. dad told him to go take a picture outside, and then and that was in Long Island. And then when he... So I told him to watch Phenomenon. When he saw one of the pictures in Phenomenon, he called me immediately and like freaking out and be like, that's exactly what I saw. 100%. Oh, shit. So wow. there's veracity yeah. to all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, 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 you know. I had time loss. I've, I've shared it on the pod a long time ago. Um, Did you? Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, it was when I was in graduate school, um, which was in Chapel Hill, but I lived in the, the county uh, south of there, uh, Chatham County, for those who are listening from North Carolina. And I would cycle. Uh, my house was like 10 miles away, but but sometimes on like Fridays, I would take a long country bike ride uh, back to my house. It was probably like 20 miles. Mm. And I, I turned on this road. And if you've, if you've ever cycled, you, you, there's like a sound to your bike, you know, just the chain and the wheels on the road. Yeah. And I was. I always put baseball cards in my. Yeah, yeah. 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 It sounds like a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 you know, there was the, there's that sort of familiar sound. And I'm, I'm biking along, and then I realized that I'm not hearing my bike anymore. Mm. And I was like, that's probably bad. Yeah. So I, I thought there was something wrong with my bike, and so I, I stopped, and I got off my bike, and that's when I realized there was no sound. Wow. And I was like, what is going on? And then there was like this sucking sound, and then like, it was almost like time kind of came back and then immediately all the sound came back to the, Crazy. and I was like, what, what just happened? And I, you know, I had been cycling and I knew sort of how long this ride took. Cause I did it a bunch and there was time sort of just missing from like, I was like, wait a second, how did I like, I, so I don't know what happened exactly, Crazy. except I remember distinctly, like, I don't hear my bike. And then when I stopped, I'm like, wait a second. I don't hear anything. There's mm. no, I can't hear the wow. wind. I can't hear the, 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 mm. just the trees or bugs or anything. And then there was that <laughs> sucking sort of sound. And then this sort of, and I was sort of back. Like, almost like you're going right back into reality. Yeah, yeah like right back. Do into you clean it. your ears a lot or is that not a thing you do? Because you just need an ear candle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Could, or a stroke. We talked yeah, about, yeah, it could be a stroke. Yeah. Couldn't it have been that you were in the this like based on the gravity thing, right? Yeah, been, that yeah. you were just in the vicinity of one of these things. Yeah, that's that, the, that's what Shane said. Yeah, when I first saw the story, from yeah. the, something above you or in the side of you. Or right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Is, at this point, I think it was is some sort of thing called a just sort of and swept. It, it could have been the spheres that we keep seeing flying. Yeah. around, Right. It could be as small as that. The same thing. Probably, yeah. Right. right. Exactly. It just sort of pulls gravity, and, and most of us, you know, don't really notice it. Yeah. Um. And, and they probably go so fast at certain points, and it's if you're in the middle of the woods or you're in a yeah. complicated enough area, yeah. 
Right. Wow. I, I I meant to tell you guys. I just went. I didn't get this here. I got. They got this for me last time I was here. But I was just in Alaska, and uh, they have a famous, a couple of famous, you know, occurrences there. But yeah. we went on a seaplane. I went on a seaplane for the first time, and the, the my girlfriend knew the guy, the pilot from high school. And at the end of the trip, I was like, "Hey, thanks so much." And I was like, "Hey, ever see a UFO?" He's like. Yep, and just matter of factly, <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> matter of factly, told me a story about how, and and he showed me, he actually showed me exactly where it was because it was back on where the, the dry dock was, where, the, where the, uh-huh. the, the the dock was. He saw, he saw me how far it was far, but he goes, um, uh, he goes, I saw when I was when we were flying in, I saw this, I saw this object. Uh, uh, that was uh, uh, right above the beach that was on this island. That was right, and then they, they landed. He told his wife, and his wife was like, "What are you talking about?" And he goes, "Look that way over there." And then he said, at that exact moment, they saw two objects, like circular, come out of the ocean and just take off and disappear. Oh yeah, right. Wow. That's so. So many people have seen that exact thing. Exactly. Yep. It's just endless. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's just endless. Yeah. But he said it like he was giving me his grocery list. He was sure. Like, yep. Yeah. So it, uh, and without even with no irony and no no theater, no nothing. Yeah. Wow. That's wild. Well, I I, uh, I hate to cut this to an end because it's it's always great to talk to you. I love this. And, yeah, it's and fun. So I, I do want to, uh, as a way to introduce uh, your other life as a comedian, um, is for, for our audience. Do you t- do you talk about any of this on uh, in your act at all? Like I I don't. And I don't think Shane. I don't think. No, I don't. Um, I have yes. I only have one thing, and I and I purposely didn't do more because it's a big. It's supposed to be a reveal. I. So I've been doing a bit that's been working. I I talk about, but if I do like an hour somewhere, I'll talk about being divorced about two or three times during the set, just mentioning a a couple different jokes. And I kind of feel like a traitor a little bit because of how much I do believe in this stuff and how much I. But I have a joke at the end because I my it's very different from how my act is. Mm -hmm. So I have a joke at the end where I just go, "Hey, we we learned a lot during the pandemic. UFOs are real." And I awkwardly I talk about favor, I awkwardly describe UFOs for like two and a half minutes. Yeah. And then I go, what I'm trying to say is divorce is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and it works great. If I, do sure. pro- if I get enough frenzy and I get yeah, my yeah. tinfoil hattie and then I say it, it really, it's worked really well. And sometimes it doesn't, it goes, it d- runs the gamut. But it's really <laughs> fun to do because of how into it I am. But I feel like a turncoat. Sure, yeah. like, well, no, just so you know, I believe in all of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. That's one of the things you struggle with. I think all of the struggles comics, like I know this is funnier than this thing. And I know I can use the truth against itself to be funnier. And it's like, yeah, I know it doesn't feel right but man it does work yeah it does work and yeah. i found myself even with other stuff i found myself going well that didn't like happen but this happened, well, sure. happened. Yeah. and like, in the act i'll go well not really but you know like, I, just feel <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like i'm lying to you or something right. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're... But, but, but it's actually the reason i've tried that joke in the past year maybe but I, then i stopped for a while but when i did on the road a couple times i had i think i told you guys about this maybe another other time i did the show Two different, same thing. Two or three different anecdotes come right up to me that were like, yeah. "This seems believable to me." Yeah. Right. Once again, this just seems normal. I didn't see. I didn't chase you down. You came. Uh, you came to me and yep, you gave right. me a pretty believable story. You know, everybody has little pieces of the information. Yeah. yeah, and that's what Grush said. People came to me. He's like, "I didn't search them out. They came to me and told me their story." So, right. um, that's it. Just, that's what it is. It just takes more of this talk to get more people to be willing yep. to get it out of the realm of your crazy to the realm of your plausible and it's believable. From yeah. sources like this, this guy. This is, this, I, this is unimpeachable to me. This is just another b- b- giant piece in disclosure to me. I, right. I, I'm just at the point now I believe what the guy is saying. I Absolutely. Think, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, uh, where can folks find you or see you do a comedy uh, soon? Y- you can find me. Um, when is this coming out? This is coming out. Today. In, today. Today. Perfecto. I'm I, you can, at Shawnee Time on Instagram and uh, at UFO Street on Twitter where I do the videos. I'm going to okay. put more of those up there. So please follow that. Uh, and then also, um, I will be opening for next week. I'll be opening for a Gary Goldman special in oh, Toronto. I'm amazing. Oh, nice. Gary Goldman's And great. then I go to the Dallas house of comedy, I think after that. And then I'm in Batavia at the comedy vault in Illinois and Batavia, Illinois. Awesome. So yeah. So I put all my stuff on my social media, so please come check it out. It'll be worth it if you're listening and, uh, please, please try to catch Sean somewhere and see a show. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. It's always our great pleasure to have you and talk about it's, this stuff. It's, the pleasure is mine. It's always great to see you. I love you guys personally and based off our UFC. Same. Awesome. Same. Stuff. And you're both hilarious fucking oh, well, comics. Thanks. So, so thank this you. Is always, I'll do this anytime you need. It's always awesome. such a fucking joy, man. Good right. company so for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, more news to come on our, our brand name chain. So stay tuned. This has been Conspiracy Beer Me. For now, I'm Justin. I'm Shane. And this was... Jonathan.